Welcome to another video in my series on sound changes, where I'm sharing the ways that sounds change over time in languages. I've covered sounds becoming more or less similar, and sounds getting added or deleted. This time I'll highlight a few other sound change types. Starting with lenition, which means that a sound is weakened, it becomes more voiced or less restricted. This weakening often happens adjacent to other less restricted sounds like vowels or fricatives. Lenition is potentially a multi-step process. A lenited sound might simply go from voiceless to voiced, or plosive to fricative, while a fully lenited sound disappears altogether. The Spanish stop the is lenited to a fricative the between vowels. So this word is phonologically dados. Most speakers glide past this middle the with even less restricted airflow. Dados. Some speakers take the lenition a step further by omitting the entirely. Daos. The path of this lenition was voiced stopped to voiced fricative to voiced approximate to nothing. There are two main paths a lenited sound may go down. If the sound in question goes from a stop to a fricative to an approximate, like the Spanish one did, this process of relaxing the airflow is called opening. For instance, Tuscan Italian speakers soften k to a fricative h. So, Toscano gets pronounced Toscano. If the sound goes from voiceless to voiced and then becomes progressively less restricted, it's called sonorization. We can see sonorization if we extend the timeline for the Spanish word dados I gave before. That word descends from a Latin word, datos. You can see a clear example of sonorization in this progression. Datos to dados to dados to dados to daos. When sounds get weaker, becoming more like voiced approximates, we call it lenition. What about sounds getting stronger towards voiceless stops? That happens too, and it's called fortition. Strengthening turns a less restricted sound, like an approximate or a fricative, into a more restricted one, like an affricate or a stop. As a simple example, the y sound in u is fortified to an affricate j in the colloquial pronunciation of did you as didja. I'm going to move on to a handful of other sound change types, so start making a list. Don't fear though, I'll give simple explanations and examples of each one along the way. If a consonant is deleted, but the vowel before it is lengthened to make up for that loss, it's called compensatory lengthening. The Proto-Greek word pods, foot, eventually lost its d, but ancient Greek speakers lengthened the vowel o to compensate for that loss, so their word for foot was pos, not just pos. Speaking of the Greeks, if two or more sounds swap places, that has a fun Greek name, metathesis. In the non-standard pronunciation of ask as ax, the two consonants k and s get switched. Similarly, Sardinian speakers say trau for bull instead of the expected taru, inherited from Latin taurum. If one or more vowels change to become like another vowel within the same word, it's pleasantly called vowel harmony. Two examples here. First, the easier one. Turkish builds words by tacking on endings. But the vowels in those endings harmonize with the last vowel in the root word that they attach to. So the Turkish noun ev means house, and the plural is evlev, houses, where the plural ending has the matching vowel e. But the plural of bina, building, is binalar, with an a. Second example. The vowel a in the Proto-Germanic word for people was raised and fronted to e in men under the influence of the high front vowel e in the next syllable. This change towards a high front vowel is called umlaut in the history of the Germanic languages like English. I'll cover one more change here. We looked at stress and pitch accent in the IPA for language learning. 
If the way a language accent syllables changes over time, the name for that is an accent shift. Early Indo-European languages stress different syllables in different words, which shows up in the way Sanskrit and Greek accent the last syllable in pita or pater, but the first syllable in mata or meter. Germanic languages like English have fixed the stress accent to the first syllable, and this accent shift explains why the English equivalents of those words are father and mother, both stressed on the initial syllable. In just a few short videos, you've been able to arm yourself with a range of sound change types. But instead of long-winded prose, can we capture these sound changes in concise formulas? The next video will tie up this series by showing you the most common and traditional way linguists visualize the sound changes that I've explored in this series.